Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So this is a video that's very close to my heart because it details my process of taking notes and reading on an iPad. So as you can see, the subject of the video is how I read books and take notes on an iPad. Plus, given the current situation with COVID-19, I'm specifically happy to take up a book that is very close to my heart and I think it's going to help a lot of people process their feelings through COVID-19 and what they're going through. So my choice of device that I use for recording purposes is an iPad Pro. I switched over from using Kindle. An iPad, look, I mean, it's a fantastic device. It's very useful, it's, 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 it's very portable. And the idea is that it can do it all, right? With a Kindle, you gotta kinda have it accompanied with the other products. So let's take a look at my current Kindle shelf. And as you can see, it reflects my current mood is one of anxiety, sadness, and frustration. Anxiety because of the current situation, sadness because we don't know when it's gonna end, and frustration because, again, you know, there's a lot of people suffering. So my current pick for this video is Hardwiring Happiness. This is by Rick Hansen, PhD. And this is a scientific, well-researched book that deals with the topics of hope, contentment, calm, and confidence. So let's proceed, read the book and take notes. So prior to jumping into actually the whole process of taking notes, I thought it'd be an important thing to kind of highlight the apps that I use. And I'll be using two apps side by side, Kindle and GoodNotes. So here you go, I'm gonna open up Kindle and GoodNotes side by side. Kindle on the left hand side of the iPad screen and GoodNotes on the right hand side. Now, I'm sure that those of you who have the iPad Pro are aware of the fact that you can kind of slide over on each side um, to make it full screen. But I think that even though I have an 11 inch iPad, it does allow me enough of sort of real estate in terms of screen um, to be able to use it effectively. Now, you know, for those of you who have used the GoodNotes app, you'll kind of realize that, you know, you can do a lot of customizations, including picking a cover. Here I'm going with a teal colored um, cover. Um, I'm gonna pick teal. In terms of paper choices, I like to work on legal size paper because it's long and it has columns. So let's um, select legal, create a notebook, name it. I don't know, Rick Hansen um, Happiness seems like a good choice. So Rick Hansen Notebook is what we are going to name it and click create. And there you go, your notebook's been created now. So yeah, again, you can pick a uh, music on an app you like. I pick YouTube, just play anything really that comes to mind, mostly meditation music. And I do like to read who said what about a book first, because it gives me a context into what the target audience is. And I know that a lot of you may have questions about the fact that, look, any writer's book is going to have recommendations that are favorable to it. So not saying you have to give a lot of value to it, but just give it enough importance in terms of being able to de being able to decode who the target audience is. And with this app, you can pick your pen sizes. I go with the fountain pen. I normally go for the smallest option, but I increase the size of the pen to about 0.4 because the default for the smallest is 0.3 mm. So I like to get a feel of sort of writing it with my own hands, just the headline page, just the cover page. It just makes me feel um, just makes me feel a little bit connected to the thing I'm doing, to the book I'm reading. And just the idea, right? As you write every word in a, on this app, using your pen there, using your Apple Pencil, the core idea is to associate this activity in your mind with happiness or the idea that you relish it. And the more you do it, your brain's gonna be able to make that connection. And if you haven't done it for a while, the brain's gonna prompt you to actually try doing it again, because it creates some sort of a positive association in your mind to that type of activity. The activity in this case being one of taking notes and good notes using their wide assortment of pens.
Now, I thought about it and I thought as much as I'd like to do a page by page of this book itself, which I'd be happy to do, but I'd like to give a little bit of an insight into how I read and take notes and, in and into the process um, that I use. And I think at the outset, I'd like to say that there's a few themes I'd like to kind of, in uh, kind of like to discuss here. And one major theme is that of active reading versus passive reading, right? So a lot of people um, read a book. Even the act of reading a book can be done actively, passively, right? So actively means you're challenging the assumptions of the author, doing critical thinking upon what you find in the book. Passive reading is just consuming content as you would uh, when you watch a video on YouTube or on Netflix. So with reading, especially a book that's uh, that, that's of this type where you uh, kind of expect to learn the core idea is to do active learning right you challenge you read an idea you read a thought in the book you challenge yourself and not just sort of passively reading it and in this case considering i'm taking notes i'd say it's even more important right because why am i going to waste my time copying what i see in the book or at least you know you know parts of of this book that i find important why would i still copy it onto my notebook unless it adds value to my life or to my learning process. So the core idea is that, is that every time you sort of, even if you make a note of certain parts of the book, you make a note in your head and challenge yourself and make yourself think, if this is an idea that I can possibly sort of mull over and come up with certain associations in my own head from my own life experiences, as long as you're able to connect the book and ideas in the book with your own life, that's where true active learning happens. It moves from a rote um, copying of the notes to actually being able to build it. And as you can see there, you know, the part in green and red are the things that I've added from my own side, right? I was able to connect it with a lot of, you know, different things I had read in a lot of different books and bring it here. So that when I take a look at this note again in the future and I take a look back at it, I'm going to be able to kind of realize that I had reached a point in my learning where I was able to do that. And that's a very comforting notion that you're incrementally able to build on your learning from one stage to another. So a lot of people kind of get confused and a lot of people get lost in the weeds, which is I'm all for making cute, you know, pretty notes and everything else. But I do believe that at, at a certain stage, it is equally important to kind of, you know, I'd say less is more, right? So the less notes you make uh, would make you ensure that any amount that you've actually noted down is worth its weight in gold and the value is higher. You derive a lot more value out of it. So yeah, as you can see here, I'm just I'm just going through the book. I'm taking a note of the things that I find important. And since I'm doing this for the sake of the video here, I'm actually noting down the points on, on the app that I find you might want to consider. So this is not really note taking off of the book, but more uh, an exposition on the note taking process, as well as um, the points you might want to consider and at some point in the video I'm going to zoom out of the page so you get all the points in one place in case you want to zoom it uh, Zoom on it in case you want to save it screenshot it and use it for your own Sort of references and I think that this is what helped me through law school and university Education as well Because I think that critical thinking really is of the essence here, especially if you're reading a book that is not of a fiction um, nature. It's very important to kind of challenge your mind to come up with associations. So ask questions as you read, challenge the author, don't worry about knowing um, not so much. This is uh, a problem that a lot of us have. We kind of assume that we don't know enough to challenge the assumptions of the writer and we kind of take it at face value. But the whole, it's it's a little bit of a chicken and egg type of a problem because if you don't build on your knowledge, if you don't build on your understanding, you can never reach a point where you can challenge anybody on a 
on you know the level of logic and reasoning so the and, and then the only way to do that is to be able to challenge it even from a lower a uh, quote-unquote intellectual base of knowledge so you do it and then you build your strength and again intellectual robustness comes from step by step you have to learn how to reason rationalize have an argument that is um, robust but it can only happen when you make a start and when you make a start uh, start small but but keep keep consistency And I think a classic way to kind of explain it, as you see here, points points one to three are the exact num same points as you see on the left pane in the Kindle app. But for each of the points, I've kind of made my own annotations, which says that you're going to take about 30 seconds to about a minute to reflect on the idea that you saw in the book, right? So that wasn't what the author said, but I kind of added it from my own side as some sort of an exercise to make it more active um, more valuable to me and you could try this with literally any book that that tries to teach you things you know and that's where the value add uh, is in terms of active reading from your side so yeah I mean I hope you like um, a few of the points I mentioned in terms of being able to use um, active reading versus passive and I found a quote in the book that that I thought might inspire you in these um, difficult times and I want you to consider this So this was my experiment with long-form content, just sharing my way of taking notes, reading books. I hope you find, find it useful. If you do, please um, like, comment, subscribe in this channel. And let me know if you, wanna, if you want me to make more long-form content. And if you find this type of content useful, I'll be happy to make more, more such content. And again, just like this, my goal is to kind of provide you content that is engaging. So thank you for watching and have a great day.